The time is upon us to assign patterns to the yarn so we can do some stash busting. Starting with all the yarn that I have from Expression Fiber Arts. So all of that is my fingering weight and the um, Sport and DK. I don't have any in the thicker weights, so we'll start with them. I already have those assigned, but I'm going to pull out the yarn and tell you what they are. This is, should I? Okay, question. Do you want me to, in <coughs> I can speak, just not right now. Do you want me to include the, the projects that are already have patterns printed and are just waiting for me to make them? I think I have shown these to you before. I may show them to you at the end because they are in, there are my hooks over there and I hear a doggy. There's a doggy coming. <laughs> anyway, we'll get started. So we have uh, a bunch of fingering weight. The doggy's not coming. Sorry, the, win the window is open and she is barking because she's a dog. She's outside, I don't know, whatever. Okay, I do also have non-EFA fingering weight. I have this Rowan. Um, oy. I have this cute, what, like baby pink, a rosy baby pink and a baby blue. And there's also a mint green in here. Um, how many? I have, let me just pull out all of the fingering weight cubby. Please hold. Okay, apparently that's all my full skeins of fingering weight. So let's get started. All right, I have of, so there's nothing fell back there that's, okay, we're all good. So I only have, of this Rowan, I only have one of this baby pink. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of the baby blue. I started something with it. Um, it wasn't quite as it should be, so I frogged it. What did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six. I can count. No. I have six of the blue and six of the mint green. Um, I will put it on the screen of what it is. Um, and if you have any ideas on what to do with this, please tell me. <laughs> I have had this for about five years now and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, I got it because Webbs was having, I think it was like a closed out sale of this parti these particular colors or something. So I grabbed them. They are soft and adorable. If there's something that I can make with all three colors, like have the pink be a cute accent color or something, because I only have one of the pinks, that would be great. So I need pattern ideas for the Rowan. Now let's move on to the ones that I actually know what to do with. These are all EFA because they're my favorite. Uh, right. Um, it's called Plonge. No Plonge. What? I can speak. Um, plonge. It is a cute shawl wrap thing that has beads. It uses their vellum fingering. I don't believe they currently have this base. They no longer have this sock. Sock? It's not sock. It's a fingering weight. It is... Words. Okay. They don't have this yarn base at this time. So, I was going to make, what did I say, plonge with this, the vellum fingering. I have two colors. I think the pattern was, that's not it, written for three, um, and I grabbed two. It has 201 yards per thing, so I have... 
I have enough. Um, oh, you probably want to know what vellum fingering is, don't you? Okay. Vellum fingering is 70% baby alpaca, 20% mulberry silk, and 10% yak. This, oh my gosh, if you could touch this, this is so delicate and so soft. This is going to be a cute, a cute shawl. It does, it's a intermediate difficulty. It is knit. Oh, it actually had four skeins, four skeins, four colors. And I picked two because why not? It is done flat in one piece. Um, repeating sections of beaded stockinette, drop down overs and baubles. That's the plan for my vellum fingering. No, oh, I should tell you the colors that I picked, but why should I tell you? Because these colors are not, this yarn is no longer available. So I have two of the color overcoming and two of the color sense of wonder. Let's see if I can get these close enough that you can see. This is overcoming. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. And this is sense of wonder. I hope you can see that because guess what? You're on my phone. I don't have a real camera. I think there are two projects in this bag. I don't believe this is available anymore. This one is not available anymore, but it was called um, Signature Fingering and it had their um, signature teal color that they have on their um, labels. <laughs> That's the word, labels. And it's, it's changed a little bit. But, so they had the teal combined with some other colors and it was just gorgeous. So I grabbed up one of these colors. I have to find it, hold on in this color called Secret Destination. Um, it's kind of a lime green mixed with that teal. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I should tell you what, <laughs> what the fiber content is. 30% linen, 30% mulberry silk, and 40% baby alpaca. This is also very light and fluffy and soft. Not as soft as the vellum fingering, but still very soft. So I had, like I said, I had two, two projects out of what was in this bag of all the signature fingering. So the one I decided to do for, <coughs> excuse me, this color of Secret Destination was called Embrasser. This one is actually a crochet pattern. I know I don't typically do crochet, but I I do prefer to knit over crochet and every once in a while I do get that crochet urge. I was a crocheter before I was a knitter. I don't have hobby bias. I don't care which one you do, they're both fun. This is a crochet pattern. It is a shawl wrap type thing, cardigan. It's a rectangle that has sleeves and you can wrap it in certain different ways and it can be like a, a cardigan, you can make it a scarf, you can do it like a tube top with sleeves. I like the stitch pattern on it. Sample used a limited edition color that, well, it's obviously sold out because they don't have the yarn base anymore. I love the sample color though. There it is. Bolero style wrap. Does that make much more sense than whatever the crap I said? Um, a diamond shaped lace body with cuffs at each end. Thinking more springtime, this doesn't feel like a old weather make. I mean, yeah, I like to make things off season so that way by the time it's ready, I can actually make it during the season I made it for. But I don't wanna make this when it's cold and cold. <laughs> Embrasser, bolero style wrap, scarf, tube top with sleeves thing. Um, that is in the lime color. 
that had the teal in it. And then the one that's crazy, that I was doing the other colors in, Andante, and this one is a knit pattern. This is a shawl wrap thing, intermediate difficulty. Four colors, I have my four colors, four, four colors, one of each is needed. This one is the color Trek. It's a, like a sky blue with that teal. Okay. Um, open window, kind of like a goldenrod, I guess. Sorry if the lighting changes. We have a overcast slash sunny day. It rained yesterday and it was glorious. Um, this one is called Stories to Tell. I think this one is basically teal on teal. And then Adventures. So this really fun magenta with the teal. Okay. So, Ooh, yeah. Andante is, did I already say it was knit? I think I did. It has German short rows. I think it's garter stitch. I think it's just garter stitch with German short rows. I liked the multiple colors of this one and how it changes. Like the, the transition and it, the subtle stripes. So this one will be fun. I haven't decided the color order. I figure I can decide that when I actually make the thing. Okay. So there's that one. Okay. This next one is also crochet and it is called Colette. This is a lacy cardigan with buttons and it is adorable. The original used the signature fingering, but I think that was all gone by the time I wanted to make this one. So I grabbed one, I grabbed the colors, I grabbed the colors, I grabbed the bamboo alpaca fingering. Ooh, this yarn base is in stock. So if you want to make this pattern or any of the other fingering ones, plonge, embrasser, andante. If you want to make any of those, you can use the bamboo alpaca fingering. This is 80% viscose bamboo and 20% alpaca. Remember, all of these are um, hand dyed. This color is called Forever Memories, and it's kind of like um, the color of the double mint gum if that helps. <laughs> okay. Colette is a crochet lacy cardigan. You can have it with sleeves or you can do it sleeveless. I don't know why you would want a sleeveless cardigan, but that's just me. It's an intermediate to advanced level, skill level, single crochets, double crochets, pico, um, two double crochet puff stitch, worked bottom up, so you can make adjustments to length. Sleeves are worked separately and sewn onto the body. After front and back have been joined to the shoulder. Lace pattern is easily memorized. There are video tutorials on how to do the lace pattern. If you're doing one with sleeves, it has finished bust size is one, what? The ease is one to six inches larger than your actual bust size. So you have a lot of wiggle worm, wiggle worm, wiggle room to work with for with how much ease you want. Words are failing. Oh my word. Okay. I think that's all the ones that I have planned out in the cubby. Oh, nope. That's not true. I lied. The Ephemeral fingering. I mentioned that I had a plan for these ones and that it includes using some leftovers in my box up there. This is for a new top. This yarn base is still available. 
you know, at the time of filming. I have the color Bailey and Layla right here. It's 69% Peruvian Pima Cotton and 31% Lyocell. So Bailey is a dark foresty green and Layla is a light minty green. So here is Bailey. And then here is Layla. Okay, now the pattern that I got this for, because if you remember, I am trying not to buy the yarn just because it is pretty. I have to buy it for a reason, okay? And so far that's working pretty great. So this was a pattern released this year, also Expression Fiber Arts. This one is Knit. It's a top using the ephemeral fingering. Cannot pronounce this one to save my life. I was planning on doing it in stripes, color blocking. I'm gonna be blinded here. Using these two and the leftovers that I have also from, can you see it back here? From Entangled, I have, I'm gonna have the purples left over and I have the cream and I have blue around here somewhere. So that is going to be a cute top for the ephemeral fingering. I can't say this one. <laughs> anyway, also don't have to use the ephemeral if you don't want to. Any fingering weight will work. This pattern I can't pronounce is the Portuguese word for smocking. So if you speak Portuguese, tell me how to pronounce this word, please. It's worked bottom up in the round to the armholes, separated for front and back, then worked flat to the shoulders. Shoulders are joined with a Hello, son. With a three needle bind off, then sleeves are picked up and worked down to the ribbing. There are videos to watch on how to work the smock and the smock stitch and the cable cast on. There's German short rows. The yarn is held double throughout. So it's gonna have a fun marled effect. <laughs> I am going blind um, with the colors that I pick. Picked. So that's the plan for that one. This one, you've seen this one, I believe. It is already in progress. It is sitting, it's in one of my bags over there. It is called Galeen. It's a shawl and I am using the original yarn base that has been reworked for a different um, base. So Galeen is a shawl. I am using the original one, the Allure Fingering, which is 100% Mulberry Silk. I'm using the color Sterling Silver. And this is one of those projects that is sitting in timeout because it is boring to me at the moment. So original yarn base is the Allure Fingering. The new one is the Ephemeral Fingering. It's a cute little shawl. It's knit. Beline is an ancient Greek goddess, super fun what personified the calm seas. So this has slip stitches and it curves, okay? And you create slip stitch columns. It's garter stitch with those slip stitch columns. It is fun. However, it can be tedious at times. Just forewarned. So I have, for some reason, this one is sitting up here and it's not in the bag with the project. I need to do something about that sun. Please hold. Okay. So this next one is one that I picked up before I did this restriction on myself. I picked it up because it was pretty. It's also Expression Fiber Arts. I mean, seriously, at this point, they should just sponsor me. Are you listening to me, Shandy? You should sponsor me. <laughs> or at least, you know, give me a discount code or something. Okay. This is called Gnome Home. It is the Oasis Fingering Base. This is a yarn base that they always have. This is a staple. Um, it's 50% camel and 50% mulberry silk. Now, if you go to their website, you can search their patterns by yarn base. Now, I haven't decided if I want it to be a knit project or a crochet project. There's a top, but, but you see, so let me, let me take the label off. This is Gnome Home, okay? 
have no idea if this color is available. I don't want to check. So it has the feel of mossy forest and a little and little gnomes, mushrooms and and things. Okay, it's adorable. And I got it because I thought it was cute. So now I have one skein of the Oasis. Um, oh, I take that back. I have two skeins of Oasis fingering. This is also Oasis fingering. And I think it was one of the copper colors. It's It was an oopsie skein. So you know how, because things are hand dyed, it doesn't, sometimes the dye doesn't go correctly. And so there's a bit of an oopsie right here. You can see that. How there's some dye that didn't quite dissolve right. Um, so this one's like a copper color. Uh, Gnome Home is green and foresty and coming apart. Anyway, so I look and there's t cute tops. There's a scarfy shawl thing. I don't know what to make out of this one yet. So that's why I haven't assigned these to a pattern yet. So if you have like favorite one skein fingering weight patterns, send them my way along with pattern ideas for the Rowan because these are unassigned at the moment. And then following in the same vein, because I thought it was cute, this is the pearlescent fingering in the color Emerald Swallowtail. I think this was their Things with Wings collection. I think this is a butterfly. This collection, they don't have any yarns in this collection anymore. So, pearlescent fingering is 50% superwash merino wool and 50% mulberry silk. Yep, this is emerald swallowtail. So, it is, again, greens. It's kind of like a more bright color of the gnome home. So, again, I don't know what to make with this one. I have one skein of the pearlescent fingering. I can, you know, go to their website and filter by yarn base. I'm not searching for knit or crochet. It's just which base. They have 38 patterns that use the pearlescent fingering. That is both knit and crochet. You either need to find some yarn that complements this very well or find a one skein pattern. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think this is, this is the last of the fingering weight. This is a base they no longer have. Um, it's the sparkle fingering, 60% superwash merino wool, 26% nylon, 10% baby alpaca and 4% metallic. And it's like a dark navy blue night sky color. There's black and purple and dark blue. And it is sparkly. And there's hair on it. <laughs> yeah, they no longer carry this yarn base, so I cannot get any more. I don't know what to do with it either. Again, I bought it because it was pretty. This is why I am not doing that anymore because then I am stuck with the one skein wonders. No idea what to do with them. I'm going to put these away back in the cubby and then we will continue on to the sport and DK weight. Where was I? All right, sport weight and DK weight. So um, let's start with the one that I actually have planned for. <laughs> um, so all of this lovely tweed, I think I've told you about this. This is for the uh, Benmont sweater. This is, you know, expression fiber arts. It uses 
the Twisted Tweed Sport or Buttery Sport. They have reworked it. The original yarn base is this Twisted Tweed Sport and it's a gradient one. I think it goes this way. Um, so I got these colors. It's the, this one is Fool's Gold. It's a light, it has some sort of pink in it and yellowish color. So Fool's Gold. Okay. And then I think the rest of them are the Fox ones. Yeah, so Fox. And then this was like Dark Fox. And I think this one is also Normal Fox or Light Fox. Um, so the Fox colors were a gradient. You had a light, a dark, and a normal. So my thinking for these was the Benmont, which is a gradient color. It is knit. It's a pullover. It's an intermediate pattern. Their Twisted Tweed Sport is 42% fine merino wool, 43% superwash merino wool, and 50% Donegal. It is done top down, I believe. Subtle color shifts with a gradient. If you want to do gradient or you can do, you can do whatever you want. There's an interesting pattern texture. Top down with a provisional cast on. It has a yoke. Sleeve stitches are placed on hold for later. Front and back are joined. Work body in the round. Do your stitches, your stitches, your sleeves. Whatever. Then remove provisional cast on and do the neck. And there are a few short rows to shape the neck, but there is no seaming. This is what I want to do with the tweed because you know how I feel about tweed. Tweed is my favorite. So I've had this for a while now. I just need to actually make the thing. Okay. And then I have a random skein of the Alpaca Silk DK, which is an always there yarn base. Same with the Twisted Tweed Sport. That is always there. Yeah, see? Alpaca Silk DK, it is there. Um, this color is snow covered. And so it's it's got some pinks and some tan. There's a little bit of gray. Okay, I don't know what to do with this. This is before I made my rule of can't buy it just because it's pretty. So, single skein of alpaca silk DK, and then I have a single skein of the buttery sport. Oh, hold on. Alpaca silk DK is 50% baby alpaca and 50% mulberry silk. No, 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 I, I don't know. I will come up with something one of these days. I may get, just like with the random single skeins of fingering weight, I may just buy more yarn that goes with it to make a pattern. Because I don't, I really don't want to <laughs> fluff around with trying to find a single skein. We'll see. It may be a while before I get to that one. And then I've got a single skein of the Buttery Sport, which is 100% Superwash Marina Wool. This was a limited edition colorway. It's called Gifts. I think this was one of their Christmas colors one year. Um, so it's red, maroon color, brown, and it was just, it was pretty. And so I grabbed it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this one either. I don't know. We'll see. We will figure it out. And I can't get, there we go. Now, the last of my Expression Fiber Arts yarn in full, wait, no, that's not true. I have one down here that is bulky weight. Um, it's the color All About Autumn. I made that um, hooded capelet thing last year and I had one skein left over. So that's 
instead of buttery sport it's buttery bulky so it's 100 percent superwash merino wool there are some things i can make out of this of a single skein i will have to remember what those are and look at it but yeah i have other than this and this that's the only other full skein i have that is not already assigned this next one you have seen before that is the one that was inspired by strawberry milkshakes <laughs> this is spoken for i bought this because it was the yeah i bought it because it was pretty but i also had a pattern in mind for it when i bought it so it didn't actually break my rule so shut up so all of these except for except for this one this one is not strawberry inspired. These four are. I think these ones were a kit. I think. No, they were not a kit. They were individual. So we got all of these pretty strawberry inspired. And then this one kind of matches the lighter pink. This is all, the, again, the Twisted Tweed Sport. So same with the fox color. This one is for a poncho pullover sweater thing. Again, I've talked about it before. It's a Koenigsegg. It's got cables up the sleeve and up the side, the underarm, I think. So I need to get this started so I can wear it in the cold weather. This is a start soon project. So I want to wear it this year because it will be fun. This is an intermediate pattern. It does cables. It's top-down construction. So you can adjust for your shoulder width and the placement of your sleeves, which is nice. Or you can eliminate the sleeves and just do a traditional poncho, okay? It is done with two strands held together. I just love it so much. It's got a giant neck kind of a turtleneck thing going on, kind of raglan shaped. It's just going to be so cozy. I cannot wait to get this started and wear it. Yeah, I think that's all of my EFA yarns, except for the ones in the bags. I'll get to those. Okay, um, let me put these back. This is actually a leftover. Why can't I think of the other word? Scrap yarn. <laughs> this is actually scraps. This is Leftover Gloss DK from Knit Picks in the color Lilac Mist. I made my mom, I think this was the Cozy Cocoa Hood by Veronica Lindbergh. And so this is leftover from that. This one actually needs to go in that cubby, but I'm lazy and I don't want to. So it goes there. This is also scrap yarn. I'm not sure if I like this one, if I want to keep it at all. It's from Premier Yarns. I don't remember what it's called. And I had a project going in it and I didn't like it. And so I frogged it and threw away the yarn. So I might actually throw this away. <laughs> don't like it whatsoever. So we're not gonna talk about it. Okay, now we are getting into, well, I have one more EFA pattern, but that will use non-EFA yarn. It's a blanket. It's a knit blanket called Conjure. It is knitted with bulky weight yarn. And I was thinking of doing the Lion Brand Hue and Me because I have, I have this to use. I think these colors are still available. And if not, then we can, oh wow, they're dusty. Grab some other colors that look great because I don't know about you, but I don't want to use a hand dyed yarn for a blanket. That's just how I feel. So the Conjure Blanket from Expression Fiber Arts in the Lion Brand Hue and Me. It's beginner level. It has pearl two togethers, yarn overs. There's a moss stitch section. It's like a sampler blanket, except in squares, it's in strips. Okay, so that's what I was thinking for the Hue and Me. Oh, and then I have, this came out of the sport weight. This comes from Hobby Lobby. I got this on accident. I thought that was a worsted weight and it wasn't. And then there's using up Lion Brand, not Lion Brand, Red Heart, because I hate Red Heart. 
I've said this before, Red Heart is trash. <clears throat> but this was, you know, I was starting out and I didn't know any better. I have, scrap the one with the label. This is spring green. It's a very woo, hairy, bright in your face green. And I want to do a crochet Christmas blanket with it. This comes from Yarn Inspirations. It's called Crochet Christmas at Granny's Blanket. It's a granny square, granny square stripe thing. It actually uses this yarn. And so I've got like one in a bit. Figured we can use that. It's very bright green. It also has a dark green, which, hey look, I have, I have a dark green to use with it. And then there's red and white. And look, I have red and I've got a cream or I can just buy white. This will help get rid of, this will do some stash busting. I think this is Lion Brand. That's either Lion Brand or Karen One Pound. Well, they're basically the same thing. So I was thinking that for these yarns, I may do that this year because I have been feeling a crochet itch. I kind of want to do that. Okay. And then this one, this one came in a, one of the Lion Brand mystery boxes. It's like a pound of yarn or something. It's the ice cream yarn. It's a DK weight, DK or sport weight acrylic. This is the color pistachio. And so it's got white and various shades of green and grayish blue in it. And I was thinking of actually doing the pattern on the label, this cute little baby blanket, which is, I found it. It is called the checkerboard blanket. Okay. There are two versions. This is version one and it takes two of these. I have three. I may just make it a larger blanket and just do that. So there's three of these accounted for. That's basically all that I've got except for the things that are in the bags. But I've got, you know, baby pink, rosy pink. I've got like four of these. I got this maroon. This is actually one of these. I made a, I made a stocking out of this last year for decorative purposes. Sparkly Karen's Simply Soft in red. And I've got a sparkly dark green Karen's Simply Soft. Maybe some Christmas decorations like, I don't know, mittens, Advent mittens or something. I don't know. There's red. I've got yellow. I've got this bright pumpkin orange. Um, and then I've got a darker orange. I've got three of these. This is red heart. I believe this is red heart. I think I'll just use these for things I want to be washable, like kid stuff, toys, stuffies. This is Karen one pound and the color cream. So it's light yellow. I've got Hobby Lobby and a peachy orange. Then, then I've got greens and I have blue and I have just like two purple, various shades of gray. Ooh, you know what would be fun? Make a blanket using all the, my different shades of gray. We call it a 50 shades of gray blanket. <laughs> I make myself laugh. Um, so I was, I was sitting here earlier looking at this. This maroon, I think, would pair nicely with this fluffy. I did this once before in that pullover that I did. It was supposed to be for Valentine's Day, the one that was um, this pink and the maroon. Uh, it was from Blue Sky Fibers, that one. Let's make a blanket out of these fuzzy ones. Possibly. I don't know. I've got six of these giant skeins of yarn, 400 grams. I have six of these. That is 
a lot of yarn, definitely a blanket or something. Now I have red, white, and blue, red heart super saver. I know, don't come at me, it's trash. But um, I was thinking granny squares. I've got two of these, use this up, make a patriotic granny square blanket or something because I've got red, I've got blues, I got, I can get white. That's fine and I'll use it all up. Make a blanket for the dog. No, I already made a blanket for the dog in this color. She doesn't need another patriotic blanket. Black and white and navy blue variegated yarn. I have like two and a half of these. I don't know what to do with that. Um, oh, then I have a whole cubby full of tweed. Okay. I have, this is Knit Picks. This is the Brava Tweed. It's the rose color. This one kind of reminds me of like those um, Easter candies, the Robin eggs. That's what this reminds me of. And then there's Creamy Tweed. These come, these particular ones are AC Moore. And then the rest that I have are AC Moore. Um, this one called Butternut. And this one is Forest. Um, I did my Weasley sweater in this color, actually. In these colors. This is my Weasley sweater. I did have down that I possibly wanted to do a basic sweater, a basic tweed sweater in this one. I may do that. I may, ooh, what if I hold it together with mohair? Like I'm doing for salty days. That would be fun. Ooh, yes. And then I have a silvery tweed back here. Yep, an entire cubby full of tweed. Just tweed, that's all. This cubby down here, right here in this corner, this is all the cotton yarn. It's mostly lily sugar and cream, which I don't like. I do not like making dishcloths out of it. I don't feel like it absorbs the water all that well and it just like makes a bigger mess. So I was thinking instead of dishcloths, we do hot pads, okay? Except I do have one skein of the scrubby kind. That would be a funky feeling hot pad. I've got down here yarn that no longer exists. It was the Karen and Pantone collaboration a couple years ago from Your Inspirations. So it came in braids like this. And so each one is, you know, a different thing. Where's the multicolored one? Ha, here you go. So it came like this and I was obsessed and I loved it so much. This is machine washable. It's acrylic and nylon and bamboo. This particular one, because this was the bamboo colorway. And so it has your colors on it. Like it has the Pantone color, which I loved. This one is, this one is also the bamboo. I have so many of these. Oh, this one is just Karen and Pantone. There's, this one's not bamboo. This one, <coughs> I cannot speak. This one is acrylic nylon and merino wool. This one is a bulky weight. This one is a worsted weight. This one's a worsted weight and they do have patterns specific for the Karen and Pantone. I was thinking of doing those ones, but then I'm not second guessing myself. Um, it's not, that's not, what am I looking for? It's not second guessing myself. Oh, hello. The sun has come out to play. It is, yeah, I guess it is second guessing myself. Like, I don't know if I want to do a sweater in these. Maybe I'll do a hat, a scarf. Maybe I will do a sweater. Maybe I won't do the specific Karen and Pantone patterns, pick my own. I don't know, but I have lots of colors of these and they are soft. I am sad that they did away with these, these, this collaboration. And then another one that I don't have any ideas on. This was also a Lion Brand mystery box. Um, it's the Twisted Cotton Blend. So it, it looks like barber pole stripes. Okay. 
It is a bulky weight and it's a mix of cotton and acrylic. So I can't do hot pads with it because you know, acrylic will melt. I have, how many of these do I have? I have three. I have three of those. So market bag, possibly. I don't know. They've just been sitting up here collecting dust. I know what I kind of know what I want to do with my Karen Simply Soft. It's either a turtleneck sweater or some more Hogwarts house scarves because I have the colors needed for Slytherin and Ravenclaw. I may do that. I haven't decided yet. That's the problem. Um, okay, do you want to see what's in the bags? I have the bags. Now these are, I may have shown these to you. I don't know, I don't remember. But these have the patterns printed. It's ready to go. I just need to pick one, wind the yarn and do it, okay? So this first bag is, oh, and they're all expression fiber arts, okay? This one is a crescent shaped shawl. It's called Nautile. It's a semi-circular spiral wedge shawl. Kind of like a Nautilus. I did make it once before and I did the bind off wrong. And so it like scrunched up on itself because it's supposed to be a stretchy bind off, but I didn't do a stretchy bind off. So I have, I'm using the suggested yarn, which is the pearlescent worsted, which is a 50% superwash merino wool and 50% mulberry silk. I have the color Iceland, so it's speckled, it's light blue, white. There's some hints of red and pink and yeah. So this is the color Iceland. This is what that shawl is gonna be made out of. Again, I just need to grab it off the wall one day and start making it. You have not seen this one, probably. This is the Papillona shawl. It's supposed to be like a butterfly. I'm using the Amal fingering, 60% uh, baby alpaca, 20% linen, and 20% mulberry silk. And I'm using these three gorgeous colors. It's really beautiful. These are fingerless mittens called the Mac and Mitts. This is using the Luster Sport. And since it's a stranded pattern, I decided to do a red and pearl. Okay. I'll also do these ones soon too, because I have to keep my wrist warm, obviously. And then the last one that is just waiting for me to do it is one that is De La Calle. It is a pattern after constellations. This one is the a uh, sparkle DK. So 60% superwash marine wool, 26% nylon, 10% baby alpaca, and 4% metallic. I picked the color Pegasus. I decided to do it all in one color. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's waiting for me. But first, I need to finish at least one of my whips before I can allow myself to start another one. If you have any ideas on what patterns to do for the stash busting, leave a comment. If you don't like what I picked and want me to pick a different pattern for some of the colors, leave a comment for that. If you just want to say you have a lot of yarn, you can leave that comment too. I don't really care. <laughs> I think it's time to go. It's time to go play with yarn instead of talking about yarn. Bye.